Hey folks, Paul Roberts here with another episode of Bob Ross Goes to Hell and Back. <laughs> Inside joke there. Okay, for this video fishing journal, this is number 23 now, uh, we're going back to our jungle laboratory to hunt up uh, more feeding bass. This time, instead of asking those bass to come up for top waters, uh, as we did in journal 22, we'll be going down into that mess uh, after them. Why? <laughs> well, because the majority of bass are not hunting the wide open pockets that we targeted with top waters in Journal 22. Bass are also inside that dense vegetation, um, either resting or they are actively hunting, taking advantage of the cracks and fissures that exist inside that heavy cover that give them access to prey. If you haven't already seen it, the background for these jungle warfare journals is Video Journal 21, where we tease out the structural configurations that make bass feeding habitat, uh, those bassy spots within such jungles. Bass are considered a generalist predator, uh, a, a jack of all trades, uh, or, or maybe better, especially in the case of large mouths, a master of all trades. Thus, bass can make use of a lot of prey types and the real estate they inhabit. So, uh, I want to describe the prey types uh, present in this pond in a little more detail, because their habits are reflected in the behavior of the bass. As I mentioned in uh, Journal 21, there are two main prey types for mature bass in this pond. Sunfishes, uh, and there are three species in this pond, that behave very differently. Um, and crayfishes, uh, at least one species that I'm aware of that are targeted by bass in this pond. Okay, first up uh, amongst the sunfishes in this pond is the bluegill sunfish, probably the most widespread sunfish in our country. Bluegills are versatile hunters that can make use of the entire water column, but they're predominantly open water hunters, adapted to suction feeding uh, tiny to small uh, soft prey, uh, arthropods essentially, zooplankton and insects, somewhere in the water column. And they're the only one of the three sunfishes in this pond that regularly venture to feed at the water's surface. This is the feeding scenario that we targeted in Journal 22. Okay, pumpkin seed sunfish are common in this pond. Uh, they're benthic feeders, meaning they're bottom oriented. They have um, actually specialized tooth pads in their throats for crushing hard-shelled prey, such as mollusks like snails and clams, and uh, harder crustaceans like the amphipods, uh, scuds, isopods, crest bugs they call them, and small crayfish. These pumpkin seeds generally are found in shallow vegetation. And then the third sunfish species we have here are green sunfish. They're also dense cover fishes, and they seem to appreciate similar habitat features as small largemouths. Breaks in cover that give them access to the slightly larger prey that they target compared to the other sunfishes. However, they being a much smaller fish than bass need smaller gaps to work within. All three of these sunfishes are potential prey for bass. Okay, the crayfishes. Um, there's at least one crayfish species in this pond, um, probably more, uh, and they occupy firm substrate where they can dig their retreats, their, their burrows. In this pond, they're found along grittier cobbled shorelines and on the tops of uh, the humps and bars that were left from the gravel mining operations, this being a gravel pit. It's in these places where the mud and muck, that organic ooze where aquatic plants can take root, gets swept away, either by wave action or uh, uh, after being left to, to bleach away in the sun during the seasonal water level drops. These areas have the, cl the clean bottom and the firm substrate that the crayfish inhabit. Okay, a note about sky conditions. Uh, we have to cover conditions somewhat, address the conditions on any given fishing trip. As we talked about in Journal 22, bright sun can make fishing tougher for anglers, especially those trying to cash in on surface-oriented activity, uh, like we did in Journal 22. 
under bright conditions, bass are apt to just melt away into that dense vegetation, uh, which can actually make our flipping, uh, pitching, punching the best game in town. Once again, the bass in that cover are there to conserve energy by reducing their activity, uh, resting. While bass do sleep, actually, they probably spend the majority of this downtime still hunting. That is, keeping at least one eye open, so to speak, for vulnerable prey. Prey that wanders too close, blunders too close, or is seen as distracted. I actually still prefer overcast skies when doing my flipping and punching, uh, because it can activate the bass, move more fish to the edges, cracks and crevices of that dense cover, making them easier to get a lure to, um, and, and, and generally more aggressive in response. They're expecting food, expecting uh, uh, an advantage on their prey, and so are more willing to um, accept a moving object as prey. They're easier to do. Now, I have to ask a, a good question here, up front. Do we really want to go back into that weed-infested swamp in, in a float tube? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Really, folks, this is fun. It just requires a cer certain attitudinal adjustment, something I could liken to the five stages of dying, <laughs> you know, that culminates in acceptance, Consider this video fishing journal, then, a primer on appropriate attitude before the pitiless whims of the gods, <laughs> okay? Or how nature adjusts our attitude for us. So, after reaching that higher plane of acceptance, I feel I can offer a few suggestions in terms of getting the most enjoyment that is the least frustration out of this type of fishing. First, as we said in Journal 22, tackle up. And where hardcover types are involved, um, even more so. This fishing is best accomplished, sometimes only accomplished, with specialized equipment. We'll be flipping, pitching, punching, which is essentially chucking a heavy weight with a lure affixed to it into the ugliest, nastiest <laughs> mess we can find, showing no fear. Cursing is A-OK -okay in this kind of fishing. Sound fun? <laughs> you bet it is. And as a bonus, we'll once again have that whole pond to ourselves, guaranteed. Such water is no place for candy-ass sissy marys anyway. Okay. In the water we're fishing here, uh, roughly three to five feet deep, I ended up using tungsten weights of three quarters of an ounce uh, for the hardcover spots. And as light as a half ounce for the softer cover edges and, and thinner mats. A 5 8 ounce sinker, tungsten sinker, split the difference well enough. The problem with using too light a weight is that our line, you can expect it to drape across all that cover, especially horizontal pieces like rushes and shrubbery, keeping the weight and lure from getting down to the fish. Unless the fish are high up in the water column, too light a weight comes through those little breaks too shallow and forced into coming through horizontally, therefore too quickly for the fish to bother tracking it in such dense cover. They get small windows too. This is especially an issue for us fishing from float tubes, um, the only craft allowed um, on these, these small public waters here, or when we're fishing from the bank. From both positions, we're relatively low to the water's surface, so uh, we must fish our lures a bit more horizontally than we would from um, a larger boat where we're higher off the water and can, can present more vertically. The answer here is to go with an extra heavy weight. Go with extra weight. The lure now sinks like a rock, cover be damned, allowing you to fish the lure more vertically, keeping it in place long enough for the bass to respond to it. 
And you can actually use those once offending horizontal cover pieces as a, as a fulcrum to hang your line over and twitch that jig and yo-yo it in place to your and the bass's heart's content. I started this adventure off with 50 pound braid and a 20 plus pound, um, that, that's 18 thousandths or, or 018 uh, nylon liter and a strong uh, medium heavy rod rated to one ounce. When I found bass using hardcover, uh, uh, rushes, uh, one literally called hard stemmed rush, uh, which I ended up <laughs> calling hard ass rush. I abandoned that sissy rig for a heavier power rod um, uh, rated to an ounce and a half um, and went to 65 pounds straight braid. Um, and you'll see why pretty much right off the bat. The rod also sports a moderate action, uh, which adds an appreciable amount of casting accuracy, which is a huge help in this game where we're always just inches from trouble. Also, uh, many punching experts, of which I'm not, recommend moderate action rods because they help keep fish wrapped up in weeds hooked um, because of the even pressure those longer levers can maintain. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with large mouths in dense vegetation does not look like a delicate affair. Yet my second piece of advice, and this may seem counter counterintuitive, is that it pays to conduct your jungle warfare deftly. The trick is to coax and cajole your lure through that cover, so you don't sink your hooks into that cover. Yeah, I've already hung on one. Oh, you can't set the hook into them. They don't give it back. This fishing also requires some precision casting because the cracks and crevices that might allow your rig to get through to those fish are often pretty darn small. Essentially, this kind of fishing requires heavy tackle, uh, no small amount of courage, and a light touch. Lastly, the trick to landing bass in such cover, however, is just the opposite. Uh, crank them to the surface ASAP and do not let them turn back down. A bass can and will bury itself instantly. To get them up and out, you need power. Uh, most flippers, punchers use heavy power rods and a casting reel with a powerful drag and locked down tight. And then fight them straight off the reel, like using it like a winch, okay? Crank them out of there. If they wrap up, especially likely in, in harder cover types, you may have to go in and get them. Keep this in mind when fishing from the bank. You may at times have to go out there and get them. Uh, be sure you can do that. Otherwise, you're going to lose your expensive tungsten sinkers. That's a fish. And he's hung me up. And I don't have a... Dang it. I don't have a way to get into him. Oh. I still got him. <laughs> oh, this might be a dangerous thing to do without a without a boat. All right, come on, honey. Here, let's get a camera on you. All right, you're about to explode. Let me get a hold of you before you do. There we go. There we go. Now the fight begins. <laughs> okay, one more thing. I want to just introduce you to the vegetation types that we'll be fishing in this pond. The first three are what I call soft cover types, uh, although they can be really dense. And the second two are what I call hard cover types. I'd include wood and brush in this category as well. However, in this particular pond, there just isn't a whole heck of a lot of it. Uh, it's pretty much rotted away. 
All right, uh, that should get us clued in. Uh, let's go <laughs> beat a live horse, shall we? <laughs> Okay, I've gone to a three-quarter ounce weight this time. I want to get back into that, some of that stuff. Yeah. That's getting down in there. All right, that's what I want. Whoa, and I got a fish. I just broke a fish off. I just broke a fish off. I want to see what broke. That's the only three quarter ounce weight I got. There's a fish. Oh, that was a fish. Hung me up. Yeah, this is a great spot. Look at that. I'm caught down in the... Do you see your bait? Not quite. Oh, it is really in there. What is it hung on? Don't hook yourself. Come on. Ow. Okay, you're going to have to bring gloves next time. Ow. Yep. I might have to change my gear. That was not even close to a fair fight, either of those. <laughs> one <sighs> buried water bass. Yes, sir. Oh, this stuff is like wood. It is. It's cellulose. <laughs> Shoo. Yeah, you're a bit undergunned. 50 pound braid and you are undergunned, buddy. Some movement in there. Certainly don't like to drop on their heads like that. Okay. I'm stuck on something. You f Look at this. Freaking solid stuff is like steel wool. Look at that, it won't cut. A braid won't even cut it.
There's one. <laughs> Pulled the rod right out of my hands. I lost the reel handle. Lost the whole thing. This bait is about shot. Shoot. There was a fish in that pocket and I spooked him. I'm right through that sucker. I'm gonna have to come through that somehow. And we're not. Right in a little wedge. How many spots do you blow before you get in there to fish? Look at that. Stuff is a mm. <sighs> Well, I missed it. My camera was off. <laughs> I just uh, punched up another bass out of the rushes. I'm having a tough time. I am having a tough time. I mean, this is not easy fishing. This is jungle fishing. But I don't have my act together, it seems. Terrible filming day. Terrible. Ridiculous filming day. <sighs> I got one in there. Oh, he's hung me up in the smart weed. Swim out of there, buddy. No, we hung up. All right, let's go in and get him. Oh, well, the three quarter ounce is making sure I'm getting down. I see a pocket I want to hit. I'm there. Getting bit. That's, that's a fish, all right. <laughs> oh, I hope we didn't take it too deep. All right. Yes, buried up. <laughs> he was chewing on that for a little bit. All right, where are you? There you are. You're not done fighting, huh? Should have left you in there. Oh, 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 we got some blood. Yep, I let him take it too deep. Darn it. <sighs> All right, I'm going in from the other side. Hang on, honey. There it is. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this one. <sighs> Atraumatically. Yeah, this is, this is a bummer. This is a bummer. <sighs> Man, this is going to be... Yep, coagulating very quickly, almost in the esophagus. I'm going to bend the barb. <sighs> Shoot. Honey, honey. 
I let you eat it too long. And you can see we are esophagus hooked. And that is a dead bass. I think I'm going to take you home. Look in your... I'm sorry, honey, but you're a goner. I can at least look in your stomach. Well, I turned my camera off for a moment. Saw a spot I thought was worth hitting. Oh. <laughs> Come on. No bug low. All right, a little slack there, buddy. Another little dark water bass, pretty thing. Your food in there, and oh, 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 there's a fishing line in there. There's a hook, I can see it. And a length of line. All right, well, we're gonna free you up, buddy. There we go. Wow, look at that. Swallowed and... I'm gonna leave that, that's in your esophagus and you're obviously still still feeding, so... <sighs> okay, little fella. There you go. <sighs> All right, let's clean this mess up. That was a fish. Mm. May not have been a big one, but it was a fish. <sighs> my camera's not on. I didn't have my cameras on. Okay, I guess you're mired up in that Elodia. It came out from under a mat. <laughs> There's somebody in there. Yeehaw. Oh. Look at the belly on you. You are fed, honey. Now you are somebody I'd like to open up. <laughs> but I don't think I will. Well, she was under that mat, he or she, and she's in good shape. All right, there you go, sweet pea. All right, that looks a little better read-wise. in. Thank you. Bring it back. Oh, I'll be damned. That may have been a fish. Look. Or a snapping turtle. Hmm. Well, isn't that interesting? There's one. Oh. Who got off? Can I 
get these? Can I pull off these? I guess I can. <clears throat> well, oh man, trash. It's just weeds after weeds. Bluegill in there, just moved him. There's one. Oh, it came off. My drag was loose. I had that drag over tightened, in fact. Did I, I must have bumped it. It was, it was loose, it was slipping. out. There's a fish. Whoa. <laughs> All right. How are we going to get you? Guess we're going in for you. How'd you like your little treat there? <laughs> Dropping in on you. Okay, there you are. You would have taken it probably. Oh, come on, I need some slack. There we go. There it goes. <sighs> All right, you can go back, honey. Yes, sir. All right, we gotta recover some stuff here. Let's do this, first of all, so we don't lose our bait. All right. Let's go dig out. That's a fish. I guess not. <laughs> I was thinking I was just gonna hit gravel right there. Oh. All right, where are you? Where are you? There you are. <laughs> All right, honey. Okay. There it is. Let's keep your rod and rail. Yeah, all right. You guys are doing okay. You guys are doing a-okay. All right. We're all the same size, but... <sighs> Come on, real. I'm gonna have to take that sucker apart already. foot rod and a little boat. 